Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Today, I have a quick benchmark video for you. Uh, due to popular request, we're looking into Threadripper 2990 WX Performance using Linux. So first time ever testing Linux for us. Apparently that was something we should have done on day one according to many AMD fans. Despite the fact that we've never done it, I'm ranting. Uh, anyway, rather than just testing out AMD's new 32 core processor, I'll be testing it against the Core i9-7980XE as well for reference. So we have the Threadripper 2990WX versus Core i9-7980XE using both Windows 10 and Linux, in this case the Ubuntu 18.4.1 LTS. Uh, both operating systems were tested in their out-of-the-box configuration, so no optimizations were made. Both test systems have been configured with 64 gigabytes of DDR4 memory. Uh, the 2990WX is limited to 3000, while the 7980XE will happily accept 3200, or well, you could go higher than that, but for the sake of trying to keep these things sort of apples to apples, we've settled with a low latency CL14 DDR4 3200 memory. Okay, let's get to the results. M Queens is part of the Pharonix test suite, and it's one of the few benchmarks in that suite that I could get to work on both Linux and Windows, as well as AMD and Intel hardware. I have to admit the test suite was a bit of a nightmare to work with. There's basically zero documentation on what the benchmarks do or how they work, and it was just, as I said, difficult to get a lot of them to work. Anyway, this particular benchmark measures the time to solve the N Queen problem, and M Queen just uses a larger board, making it a longer, more complex problem. Here we're measuring the time to solve, and as you can see, the 2990WX does this at around half the time of the 7980XE using either Windows or Linux, which is extremely impressive. Stockfish is a free open source chess engine available on various platforms and it's consistently ranked as one of the best chess engines and is the strongest open source chess engine in the world. The speed of this test is measured in nodes, essentially positions per second, and this is determined entirely by the processor's performance. Again, we see when it comes to chess, the 2990WX is a beast using either Windows or Linux. That said, this time we do see a 23% performance uplift for the 32-core processor when using Linux. Meanwhile, under the same test conditions, the 7980XE only saw a 4% performance increase. The last chess benchmark we're going to look at is Crafty, and again, we're measuring performance in nodes per second. Interestingly, the Core i9-7980XE wins out here and saw the biggest performance uplift when moving to Linux. A 5% performance increase was seen opposed to just a 3% increase for the 2990WX, and this made the Intel CPU 12% faster overall. John the Ripper is a password cracker that's currently available on multiple platforms, including Linux and Windows. Using the traditional data encryption standard, we see that the 2990WX and 7980XE execute roughly the same amount of crypts per second when using Windows. However, when using Linux, it's a completely different ballgame. Here, the 7980XE was a whopping 80% faster, but it's the 2990WX that's truly impressive, delivering three times more performance, making it roughly 80% faster than the Core i9. We also find a similar story when using the Blowfish Cipher. Here the 7980XE is 7% faster on Windows, but the 2990WX is almost 70% faster when using Linux. So while the 32-core processor looks less than impressive using Windows 10, it looks incredible using Linux. Graphics Magic is a simple but highly efficient software package for viewing and manipulating images. It supports a massive range of formats, and image processing is heavily multi-threaded. It's used by several websites to process large numbers of uploaded images. And here we're looking at the sharpen performance, which is measured in iterations per minute, so higher is better. Using Windows 10, the 7980XE is 26% faster than the 2990WX. However, using Linux turns that around and now the 32-core processor is 10% faster. Not a massive win, but the AMD processor does come from well behind on Windows to beat the Core i9 on Linux. The enhanced operation performs around 30% better with Linux, but we do see similar gains for both the AMD and Intel processors, and the end result is a minor win for AMD. Next up, we have the Apache Benchmark, which measures the performance of HTTP web servers. And as you can see, the performance is extremely poor in Windows 10. I should note that the server edition of Windows does fare a little better, but it still gets smashed about by Linux, which is why most web servers run Linux. Anyway, on Windows 10, the 7980XE was 4% faster than the 2990WX, but on Linux, the 18-core processor was almost 40% faster. So not a great result here for the 32-core processor. We've seen previously that encoding performance isn't 
a particular strength of the 2990WX. And we see that again here as the 7980XE was 6% faster when using Windows. And having said that, it really wasn't much better with Linux either. The 7980XE was still able to edge out the 32 core processor. So for encoding workloads, Linux appears to do little to help out the 2990WX. The 2990WX also sucked in our VeraCrypt benchmark and we find the same odd results with Linux. For the 50 megabyte test, the 2990WX was slightly slower than the 7980XE when using Windows 10. That said, we see when compared to the performance results on Windows 10, Linux actually tanks performance, particularly for the 7980XE. But where the 2990WX really struggled on Windows was for the memory intensive one gigabyte test. Here it offered half the performance of the 7980XE. This result was improved on Linux, but even so the 7980XE was still 35% faster. So the one gigabyte results are roughly what we're expecting to find, but I'm not quite sure what's going on with the 50 megabyte results for Linux though. I also found some odd results using 7-zip on Linux as well. For example, the 2990WX's exceptional decompression performance seen on Windows was reduced by 13% when using Linux. The 7980XE also saw a performance drop off though, it was very minor. Compression performance for the 2990WX was drastically improved. Here we see a massive 54% performance uplift. That said, the 7980XE also enjoyed a performance boost, though it was a much smaller 10% increase. Still, this meant overall the 7980XE was still 11% faster than the 2990WX. Last up, we're gonna have a look at the Blender Open Data Benchmark Suite, and I'm expecting pretty positive results here for the 2990WX, given what we've already seen in Windows. Here we have the barbershop interior test and we're measuring completion time in seconds. The 7980XE was 23% faster using Linux while the 2990WX was 31% faster. This meant while the 2990WX was 21% faster than the 7980XE on Windows, it's now 29% faster using Linux. We see a slightly different scenario with the BMW 27 test, though the outcome still sees the 2990WX well ahead. Still, whereas the 32 core processor was 52% fast using Windows 10, that margin was reduced to 45% with Linux. This time we see similar scaling using either CPU, both were 48% fast using Linux for the classroom workload. This time Linux slightly favoured the 2990WX making it 59% faster, whereas it was 52% faster on Windows. We see a very similar story here. Linux slightly improves the 2990WX's position, but overall both CPUs see good gains on Linux. Then we have the Pavilion Barcelona workload and we see more of the same, so time to wrap things up. So is Windows 10 gimping the Threadripper 2990WX's performance? Unquestionably, yes, but it is also gimping the 7980XE to a certain degree as well. And this is really important to note because if you were to compare just the 2990WX, uh, its performance in Windows to Linux, the situation would appear much more extreme than it really is. For example, you would conclude that the 32 core processor is going to wreck the 7980XE by an even more extreme margin when carrying out any kind of rendering task. Uh, but really both CPUs see an almost identical performance uplift. Meanwhile, programs that were problematic on Windows, such as 7-Zip and Veracrypt, for example, well, they still provided mixed results when using Linux. Uh, for example, the 2990WX's compression performance was strengthened, but the decompression performance was weakened. Still, overall, Linux did provide a better balance. Though, having said that, we could still at times see uh, the impact the multi-die design has and the limited bandwidth, let's say, and that was seen in 7-zip compression again, although I am reporting the average result of that test. The test does start very high and then keeps coming down as it runs more and more iterations of the test, whereas the 7980XE produces pretty much the same score on every single run. So we are still seeing that sort of inconsistent performance that jumps all over the place till things are worked out. But anyway, in the end, the average performance does end up being a lot better on Linux. Even on Linux, the encoding performance was still a bit lackluster, it has to be said, though I have only managed to do very limited testing so far. As for non-memory sensitive workloads like the Blender renders, the 2990WX was a beast. And this also includes the chess and password cracking benchmarks, for example. 
So again, depending on what you plan on using the 2990 WX for, will determine just how useful it really is. Still, there's clearly some serious Windows 10 optimizations that will need to come in order to better utilize or better manage these core heavy CPUs. I should just note though that improved thread scheduling isn't going to make the 2990WX a weapon in workloads where it is clearly struggling, but it is our hope that it can at least match the 2950X under those conditions rather than come in much slower. Results like what we were seeing in the Graphic Magic Sharpen test were promising as the 2990WX went from being a much slower than the 7980XC on Windows to slightly faster with Linux. And we saw the same thing with John the Ripper. Still, I realize this is only a small sample of applications and doesn't really do much for content creators like myself. I'd love to test out Adobe Premiere on Linux to see if my custom warp stabilizer test running a dozen instances simultaneously provides better results. On Windows, this test does manage to max out the 2990 WX, but the resulting performance is very poor. Wrapping this one up, I have to say the few days that I spent messing around with Linux was uh, interesting, but ultimately made me much more appreciative of Windows 10. As a desktop OS, it's just worlds better, at least in my opinion. And while I suppose that's hardly surprising, if that wasn't the case, a lot more uh, PC enthusiasts would be using Linux. So for now, all we can do is keep our fingers crossed for a Windows update that improves performance for these core heavy CPUs. And that is gonna do it for this one. If you did enjoy the video, be sure to hit the like button for us. We much appreciate that. Uh, subscribe for more content. And if you would like to get a look at uh, sort of behind the scenes, what happens here at Harbour Unboxed, chat to us whenever you like in our Discord chat or whenever we're awake, which is most hours of the day. Uh, and just uh, enjoy our monthly live stream. We answer questions on the fly there and talk about topics you guys want to discuss. So yeah, all a whole lot of fun and it's uh, accessible for as little as $1 a month. Anyway, enough of that. Thank you for watching. I'm your host, Steve. See you again next time.